Well, hello, welcome. Thank you for downloading this episode of Parks and Conversation. My name is Jason, and I'm joined by my friend Jeremy all the way across town. Say hello, Jeremy. Hey, how's it going? Oh, man, so good. So good. It's Friday, and it's July. So many great things. You like so, July? Well, I don't know. What is a month? What, is, what are days? What is it's time? All the same. It's a flat circle. It's all the same. Yeah. Uh, how are you? I'm, I am well. I am well. I'm ready. I'm ready to dig into this episode. Really? Yeah, because it's Parks and Rec. That's <laughs> that's what we're here for. Yeah, that's why I woke up. Oh, I mean, it's <laughs> one of the, it's one of the reasons. <laughs> okay. Most, mostly because when you texted me, it woke me up. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. I'm glad I could serve that purpose. Um, well, we are going to talk about season two, episode eight, Ron and Tammy. And the synopsis of this episode is essentially this. Leslie and the team run into a roadblock in their attempts to beautify the park or the lot, not the pit. It's a lot now. And Mm -hmm. these, these frustrations come from the worst place in the world, the library. And in particular, Ron Swanson's ex-wife, Tammy. Dun, dun, dun. And uh, yeah, so that's that's the basic plot trajectory, right? Yeah, other than Andy's shoe shine. But that, right. yeah, that's, and, that's the main one. And then and then the sub subplot is Andy. Andy gets a job. He takes over as the shoe shine guy at the Pawnee uh, City Hall. Right. And we uh, that's the cold open is the is Ron Swanson reading a speech about old Gus, who was for for years and years and years, the shoe shinest of Pawnee City Hall. And he's retiring. And uh, and so he reads his speech and everybody applauds. And then Gus has the opportunity to share a few words. And um, I I love Gus and he is cranky, cantankerous. He's finally given it back to everybody. He's like, you're all your stories were boring. I don't care about any of you. I never liked the name old Gus. Well, I don't understand why you started calling me that when I was in my 20s. It was so great. And yeah. uh, I, it makes me sad as I was watching this. I like I wish there was more old Gus before he retired. Right. Like this could have been a great, a great plot person um, in City Hall. But now he's gone. He's too- right, the, guy, the guy that everybody goes to for advice and stuff. And he just could not care less. Right. Like, yeah. That would be that would be really funny to me. Like all, all of these because everybody has these problems and they all try to figure it out and they're terrible. And then there's the one guy who has all the wisdom. And he's like, I can't even be bothered. I don't care about you. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be so good. Like you- if Leslie were to go to Gus <laughs> right. to get her shoes signed and like asking him about like, hey, what do you think I should do about the um, council's position on whatever issue? And he's just like, I don't care. Three dollars. <laughs> yeah, there's I would laugh every time. Th- there's a there's a sub character on a show called New Girl, and one of the guys, Nick, get he has these problems, and he meets him in this park, and he's this old, he's this old uh, guy, uh, doesn't speak any English, and Nick uh, just talks to him, just talks to him, and he works all of his problems out without the old guy saying anything at all, and by the end, he's like, per- that you know, you always give the best advice, and then leaves, and the old guy never said anything. And it's it's such a funny trope that, yeah, this that could have been a really good spot to put that in there here. But yeah, yeah, you know. it could be. It could have been like all the exposition. That is necessary for the show. Yeah, could be happening with not every episode, but like in a whole in an episode where they have to like do a lot of explaining. They could explain to Gus, and Gus doesn't care. Right, that'd be so good. Anyway, have you, I feel have like you, they missed an opportunity. Yeah, but I mean, I will say that it was nice that Andy got a job at City Hall. That I mean, it was a good writing point to keep him around so that it's like, why is Andy here? He doesn't, you know, because they, they had to right. figure out a reason to keep Andy around instead of just like, oh, you work for the Parks Department now because he's not responsible. Like Shoeshine, that's it's perfect for him. Like that's his level of 
you know, and as we find out later, he's at first, he's not even good at that. So it's pretty great. Yeah. For a long time. He's not good at that. Have you ever had yeah. shoes shined? No, never. Yeah, me neither. I've shined. I don't sh- even you- know why you would do it. Well, to have shiny shoes. But why do you need shiny shoes? So you don't have scuffed shoes. I guess. So you it look fancy. Like problem that solves it. It's like a self. It's like a snake eating its own tail. So you look fancy. Oh, that's never been my goal. Yeah. But you know, to each their own, I guess. Somebody's uh, got to keep Andy in business. What happened if you just walked up and you're like you were in flip flops? You're like, <laughs> can I get a shoe shine? Yeah. That, that's just a pedicure, right? At that point, so I don't know. I don't know where all of these things start and stop. Yeah, I don't know what shoes to take to a shoe shinist. Like it's like your like leather shoes, right? Yeah, yeah. Like don't take your Nikes. Maybe? Unless they also clean shoes. That's true. And like SeaTac Airport, they have a shoe shine booth at the airport. I have never seen anybody a working there or b having their shoe shined. It's obviously like, a front. You think so? Yeah, probably. They're as they're trying to smuggle in laces. Yeah, yeah, big okay. laces. It's yeah. <laughs> I don't. Know. I think it's for fancy business people who are like, look at my shoes are so shiny that I don't. I don't ever get. I don't get dirty. I don't get down with the, you know, the, the rabble, the commoner. Interesting. I don't know. Interesting. Yeah. Anyway, so now Andy's got a job. Which he is does, great. and I love his reaction to Gus's. Uh, Gus's cantankerousness is he everybody else is kind of shocked that Gus is like giving them the business and Andy is just laughing. He's like, that's, that's classic. That's hilarious. Yeah, and, at, first, uh, at first, everyone kind of thinks he's joking, like they're laughing along. And then as they realize, like, no, he's we really treated this guy poorly. And he's like, this is just classic. <laughs> he does not know how to read a room. So. Yeah, so that's the the cold open and it cuts then credits and they go into a meeting and everybody's bored out of their mind. And Leslie is saying we need to change the name of our committee from the committee from pit beautification to lot beautification. So now we're and, seeing some actual government work happening. Right. I mean, it's a big deal to change a word. Um, and then April starts texting and... <laughs> Having been somebody who runs a lot of meetings, it is super annoying when you know somebody is not paying attention and you know that because they're on their phone. Um, and so I totally relate to Leslie as she's like, can you please not t- do that right now? And and says, or April says, I'm texting you. <laughs> and then she, her whole attitude changes like, oh, she's texting me. They're sitting right next to each other. Um, and the text message is, this meeting is boring. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love it. So, oh, meetings are the worst. And then, uh, so then Mark comes in and is like, hey, I've got some bad news. I need to talk to you, uh, Leslie. And so they leave and she gives Tom, like, Tom, keep this meeting going. Keep these minds sharp. And Tom just starts a game of would you rather. (laughs) So meeting's not going anywhere because Leslie's the only one who does any work in the parks department. That's right. And uh, the bad news that Mark brings is that another city department is trying to get lot 48 which is where they're trying to build the park by ann's house and uh the bad news is that uh it's they're trying to the the worst people in the world are trying to get lot 48 and it's the library isis oh Oh, like the library yeah is there a difference i uh, not according to the people in pawnee no this joke is so funny to me it's like little sebastian like these people hate the library for no reason at all. I mean, Tammy doesn't help. I mean, obviously we see that, that they are the worst, but in reality, the library is a, a fantastic place. And I think that's the joke. It's like, why would anybody hate the library? It's awesome. Right. Yeah. Well, but, Bonnie but, is, has plenty of irrational hatred. Yeah, that's great. For different things like salads mm-hmm. and libraries. It's like things that are good for you. Like Pawnee right. really embraces. It's like this is that su- that American subtext. It's like no, we don't we don't want knowledge. We don't want vegetables and nutrition. No, why would you want any of those things? They sound terrible. 
which is always kind of been like really good because even though like Leslie grew up there. And so even though she's really motivated and smart and progressive, she still eats waffles and whipped cream way too much. She doesn't want to go to the library. It's yeah, it's fantastic. So at least they're consistent. It's good. Yeah. Until- she is a product of Pawnee through and through. Which now that I think about it, that just makes Chris Traeger's character so much better. Like he's such a, he's such an alien coming to this. Yeah. Anyway, we'll, we'll get yeah. there, but that's, it's fantastic. Well, we were watching, um, with the kids, you know, a few episodes ahead where Chris shows up and my daughter was just over and over again. Like, why is he this way? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're also, we're also Pacific Northwesterners. Right. And, I was like, and, I don't uh, know. Positivity. I don't, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs it? Let's not invite uh, that guy anywhere. No. So, uh, yeah, so they're angry. So Leslie comes and, and is like, okay, I need to help people not panic. And she comes back into the meeting. And is like, we have terrible news. The library is trying to get lock 48. And I love how everybody in, in the meeting is like, no, they're the yeah. worst. And um, Tom's insult is book jockeys. <laughs> <laughs> book jockeys. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Oh, the worst group of people. It's a library uh, slur, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> book jockeys um and Anne, it like they cuts to a talking head of Anne, and she's like i kind of don't mind having a library by my house but i'm not going to tell all these people oh so, man i would love to have a library right by my house it'd be so much fun we used to live by the library in kenmore and um it was when wi-fi was first made i don't know um, and mm-hmm. so we, I could, if I sat in the very corner of the living room in our apartment, I could get free Wi-Fi <laughs> from the library. And, and it was awesome because it's like, I, you know, we didn't have smartphones. We didn't have, like, it was a, a totally different world, but I didn't want to pay for internet at home if I didn't have to, because we also didn't have cable. We didn't have a cable bill because they never cut off the cable from our previous, <laughs> uh, renters in our apartment. Why did, so, you, like, why did you why did you move not calling Comcast ever? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so man, I was just right in the corner just to get my Wi-Fi. It was pretty great. Can't believe you moved. <laughs> I know uh, we moved because they raised the rent by one hundred dollars. And we're like, forget that. We're going to buy a house. And we <laughs> ended up paying five hundred dollars more a month. <laughs> Plus cable. So, so, you know, yeah, we're real smart. <laughs> um. It was a really weird time in our life. So um, they're like, well, who do we know who works at the library? Is there any way we can get get an inroad here to try to convince them to not go after this lot? And Mark says, well, Ron's ex-wife works for the library. And Leslie immediately starts to go into scheming mode. Like, how can we work this for our advantage? So she goes and meets with Ron. And Ron's... He tells the story, the situation, and says, and Leslie tells him, you know, your ex-wife works there. And he's like, figures, the worst person in the world working at the worst place in the world. <laughs> oh, man, he, he hates her so much. And it's so great. And every way, the way he talks about her throughout is like such deep hatred for this person. And we don't know anything about her yet other than he hates her and she works at the library. Yeah, I think this episode is really important to Ron's character, like in a in a huge way for a lot of different reasons. This is like his breakout episode, uh, Nick Offerman's kind of breakout episode. There hasn't been a real episode around him so far um, where he's just the main. I don't I don't think so anyway. And he just he shows so much range like he's he's very Ron, like he's very, you know, in his hatred. And then, as we'll see later, he just totally breaks down and is powerless. Um, but I, I just I just think it sets up a lot for his character with um, his wife, Tammy, and just so much of Ron's personality. And his, wife, and his <laughs> and, well, and his and, mom, Tammy. and his mom, Tammy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so, this is a great this is a great episode from that standpoint that it yeah. really he he really comes out as an actor um at Nick Offerman and so yeah. Yeah, it's a uh it yeah, it sets up a lot of future Ronness. Um and you get to see his creativity in the way he can describe his hatred too, <laughs> which I appreciate. Yeah. 
Um, and as they they do a talking head about how awful Tammy is. And then they ask, the, the interviewer must ask, would you ever get married again? He's like, oh, yeah, if you don't believe in love, what's the point of living? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah. He still, you know, wants to be married again someday, even though he's had two terrible ex-wives named Tammy. Yeah, just because you hate doesn't mean you can't love. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So Ron is hesitant to help. And so Leslie tries to go on her own to go and talk to Tammy and convince her to back off from Lot 48. And uh, she says, I'm going to meet Tammy. I don't know what to expect, but I'm wearing my sharpest rings possible because she's ready to throw down. Um, this one will cut you. Yeah. And uh, and then so she starts she meets Tammy in her office and she's like, Leslie, no, but figures you would be here. You have a lot of nerve. You've got three dollars in late charges. And Leslie is so angry at like the insinuation that she would have late charges or is it that she would even have used the library? I don't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> She's just angry for no reason. And she reaches into her coat pocket and throw has like a bag of change. And she just throws it like, here's your $3. <laughs> and like it figures you'd pull this in my face. Oh yeah. And, uh, the anger that just comes so quickly. I, I was, I was shocked. I forgot about that. How angry she was when like you have $3, three dollars in late charges i think i think she was ready i mean in a sense she was kind of ready for a fight a little bit and it was and because of how manipulative megan malali is she knew that going in that she was going to be ready so she's i i think it's it's tammy's way of kind of lowering her guard even coming off as like the bad guy it's it's really super manipulative so that then she can come back and say no 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 i was just i was just joking and she's like oh maybe she's not so bad so i think it's all very calculated but she did know that the, the Leslie knew that she did have the late fees. I think that's why she had three dollars in change. I think she <laughs> went in there knowing, like, if they call me on this, I need to get out of it. So I think because she had all the change in her pocket ready to go. Yeah, but so I think I, Leslie always has change. Like she, <laughs> she just seems like the person that just has a pocket full of change. Like who carries change ever? And why change? Yeah, why not yeah, dollars? Yeah. I don't know. I guess yeah. grandpas in their little folding or coin coin could pouch. It be that she had the change because she was going to use it in her fist <laughs> as a, one more way to add weight to her punch to the face. Yeah, but then and, it just it would have been a roll of quarters. But yeah, yeah let's not. Yeah, but let's not. That's neither here nor there. Um, but I do think that uh, I think Tammy wants Leslie to know. You've used the library. And oh. like, so she, cause she does say you did have these fees, but I cleared them for you. Right. So now Leslie is indebted $3 <laughs> to Tammy, um, which sets up a little bit of leverage in their relationship that Tammy can use against her um, if she wanted to. And so, but you know, Tammy's setting it up like, Hey, government gals got to work together. We got to. That's right be on the same side. And so she's building a coalition through that manipulation. Uh, that is her gift. Um, and, uh, yeah, she's terrible. I hate Tammy so much. She's, I, I'm with, uh, I'm, I'm with Ron on this. She's awful. Um, and then, uh, so yeah, so they're trying to get, they're building a relationship and then is, going talking about the the shoe shine with Andy. He's like, it's kind of weird that he's here. Um, and it's good for him to have a job because, you know, before that, it, he just spent all his time making auditions for Survivor and <laughs> uh, Deal or No Deal. <laughs> and it cuts to a video of Andy not wearing a shirt, like, and the, it's like super intense and active. And, uh, and the, but the audition tape that he's used, making is for Deal or No Deal, which I love. That is one of the best uh, fake outs in this whole series. And then he pulls the guts out of a fish. It's, it's pretty great. He's ready to deal. That's, that's the way that's, I took that. Yeah. So I had, had, did you ever audition for any of those? Did you no. ever make an audition tape? Me no, either. no, no, I, uh, I didn't watch those shows. Did you watch deal or no deal and survivor and all those? Now, Deal or No Deal was the one with the briefcases, right? I think so. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think I watched one episode of that, and I was like, "How can there be more than one episode of this?" Um, because there's so many. There's there's all those suitcases. I they guess to, it was super boring. I think but, that, you know, like great? what the wall. Have you watched the wall? I have not watched the wall. It's like Plinko from Price is Right. Uh huh. With potentially winning millions of dollars. Do like people just fall like down a hole? Like there's like pegs and stuff and they bounce off of them. No, no, they drop oh. balls. Oh, um, so, but Plinko is arguably the best part of the prices, right? I hate Plinko. It's my least favorite part. What? Yeah, there's no, How? you could, because a, all right, let's do this. A, you have no, you get like one guaranteed chip, which could land you $0. Yep. You could get up to five, which you could still yep. get $0. And yep. on average, you might get, I mean, if you even got two of them, two out of five, so that's 40%, you, you will get $20,000. I would yep. so much rather go for, I don't know, any of the 50-50 games for a car. I don't know, Plinko, it just, the payoff is, it's just not there. There's better, there's better games for winning. Now, is it exciting and cool looking? Sure. But, eh. I'd I would get disappointed. If I was like, "Well, great! It's all up to chance. Like you don't get a guess. You don't. There's no, you know, skill involved. You know." So I think you're wrong. Go for it. I I I I'm I'm excited have, to hear you. I have a foolproof strategy for Plinko. If I'm ever no, it, Are, you're right. it's completely chance, but it is fun to watch. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not denying that. I just I watched a lot of Prices Right in my life, and there are better games. But if it's not the putting game like what other game actually requires any kind of skill they're all chance yeah but some have better odds is all i'm saying as well like the tic-tac-toe game tic-tac-toe game dude that one the people win that all the time yeah i guess day and night they win day and night they win not anymore i mean i'm interested to see how and when these game shows start making new episodes um because I mean, going to run out of Drew during COVID. That's true. So yeah, we'll I don't see. Know. Anyway, not I, I'm not trying to to downplay your love of Plinko. I just you know I hear I hear Plinko. You know you see it. You, hashtag Plinko. You know, but I just don't get it. <laughs> hashtag Plinko <laughs> everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> Usually around ten o'clock. <laughs> yeah, mostly. <laughs> Interesting. Um. Okay. Where are we? <laughs> what happened? Uh. Yeah, so... So Leslie wants to set up... Yeah. Yeah, okay. So Ron goes back... uh, Or Leslie goes back and talks to Ron and says, Look, I talked to Tammy. Um, I I think we've got it worked out. And Ron's response is so great. What's it like to stare into the eye of (laughs) Satan's butthole? (laughs) Ah, it's so good. He's so angry. um, And like, he just over and over again, like, she's terrible. She's the worst. And then finally, he's like, she's here. She's here, and Leslie he can, he can brought her. Tammy to the office. Yeah, which will come up later in future episodes too. Like he'll know when Tammy is nearby, like a spider sense. Um, so Leslie brought Tammy to the office to try to help Ron and Tammy work it out. And Don is like, "Listen, you weren't here when they were divorced. It was awful. It was terrible. And they are just crazy." And Leslie opened the gates to Crazy Town. And so Ron and Tammy finally agree. Like, let's just Ron's just like, let's get this over with. Let's go get coffee and then we'll move on with our lives and then start aggressively making out and arguing like at the same time. Um, And then they drive off to a dirty motel and do dirty motel things. And I don't want to earn our explicit tag. So I don't want to get too into the detail of how gross they are, but they are gross. Is that a good summation of their relationship? Yeah, it, it's it's right. But I also, I don't know, maybe I always go back to the fact that they're married in real life. That in somehow life, yeah. in, in my head, somehow it just, it's like, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I mean, I know it shouldn't be because of the characters, but I can't separate the two so, for some reason. And so I think it's really funny that they're really, they're playing it up to be as gross as possible because they're married. And I'm like, that's, that's kind of sweet in its own weird way. Yeah, well, the <laughs> you're like no. Uh, well, I, no, I understand what you're saying, and I you see this also in um, King of Queens because uh, Jerry Stiller 
is, is uh, plays um, Doug's Ar- father-in-law, Arthur, Arthur Spooner. Yeah, he plays Arthur. Doug's best friend, Spence, his mom is played by Ann Mira, who is Jerry Stiller's l- wife in real life. And so they in that in that show, they have a similar kind of dynamic of like of animosity towards each other. Yeah. Uh, which is very funny. Like these are two people who have been married for decades. And they know, they know how to fight with each other. They know how to fight with each other and they love each other yeah. like just so deeply. And so they're able to like they say like terrible things to each other, but you it's like, but you know, like you really do love this person and and it's just funny so yeah and i think that's the whole thing with ron and tammy now yes what their characters do yeah that's pretty skeezy but i it's it's really it's really funny to me just yeah yes the the dynamic is a good setup for comedy but (laughs) their their behavior yes it is (laughs) it's awful um and so cuts cuts from dirty motel to the next day they're in the office and Ron comes in in his Tiger Woods outfit. And it's like, he, whenever Tom says, whenever Tiger Woods feels invincible, he wears red polo shirt and black pants. And uh, that's Ron's like after, after sex outfit. And so he comes in and he's like, April, you look like you could use $20. And he just gives $20. And uh, Tom's like, I need money. And he's like, that's why you're my favorite, Tom. <laughs> like a totally different personality. It actually uh, gives Jerry a compliment on his sweater vest. Right. Like that's, that is that's, that's, how you, vest. <laughs> that's how you know something's going yeah. on. So everything's off. And and then Ron uh, cuts to Ron talking head. He says, look, I like two things, breakfast food and dark, beautiful dark haired women. And Tammy is the perfect combination of all those things. Um, and so. Well, hey, well, hold on. So yeah. I get my, my wife follows both Megan and Nick on Instagram. And I guess Megan is always, always tweet or uh, posting about Nick's pancakes. Like he makes her pancakes all the time. And she just always sends posts about how great they are. And yeah, I just think that's, again, it's just really funny to me because they do, they love each other so much, or at least, you know, seems like they do. And, uh, which just makes this episode so much funnier to me. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, good. Pancakes. Pancakes. Uh, <laughs> oh, pancakes. So, uh, so then it cuts to Mark, who is frustrated that Andy is working in the building a hundred feet from his desk and he goes to Tom for advice and to say, what should I do? And Tom, you know, he tells them like, look, be the adult here, take the high road, which leads to one of my favorite jokes from Tom. I always tell people to take the high road. That way there's plenty of room for me on the low road. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so and Mark's like, all right, I'm going to do that. I'm going to take the high road. I'm going to be the adult and we'll follow up with that later on. Um, but then it cuts back to the office and Ron and Tammy are reading their divorce papers and laughing. And like, it seems <laughs> like just, wow, they're really coming together and making a, a new future for each other. But we come to find out that Tammy is manipulating Ron to make the lot a library. Wow. Leslie's, Leslie's on to him and, and says, look, you need to swear on your, uh, you swear and, and swear on your mother's grave. And Ron's like, I swear on a grave. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I shall swear on a grave. Um, but Tammy's found out like they confront her and she confesses like, yeah, I'm doing this. Absolutely. Um, and (laughs) Leslie in a hallway conversation, she says, look, Leslie, you can stress out and do everything right. Or you can be cool and I'm going to be cool. So, um, who would choose Cleopatra over Eleanor Roosevelt? (laughs) Right. (laughs) Like, like, it's just a, a huge contrast between Leslie and, um, Tammy, like they're the total opposite people. And Leslie is is manipulative in her own way, but never in a way that would like not never in the way Tammy is manipulative. Like, well, also, just, I, good. I was just going to say too. Even even when Leslie's manipulative, it's I, I feel like she's always trying to do something. You typically yeah. towards the good, but also she she almost never has the guts to follow through with it. 
Like she usually comes around, she realizes the error of her ways. Whereas Tammy okay. is just she she doesn't care. Like she will she'll do she'll go to any length to get what she wants. So yeah, yeah. Tammy is the error of her ways. <laughs> yeah. Like that's her whole thing. It's like, huh, man, whatever. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna do what I want to get what I want. Yeah, I know uh, it's bad. Yeah, we'll keep going. Yeah, it's no big deal. Uh, and then so Leslie goes back to talk to to Ron and like, I can't believe you're doing this. And and Ron says, Well, look, she made a lot of good points about libraries. <laughs> a lot of people like libraries. Libraries could be a great benefit. And so her hooks are in Ron and 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 then he realizes that what she's done and Ron starts crying <laughs> like I can't get out I'm broken I'm a weak man he can't break up with her uh, and it starts talking about how did he get free from her in the first place and it's not counseling right. it's not talking no. to a friend it took years of intense focused hatred to break up with her and now I've undone all that great work <laughs> and, I th- great and I think work. yeah and I, th- and I think again like just towards a character in the beginning we saw Ron was kind of like the um, not the mayor, but the deputy mayor, whoever he was, who came in, and we we made a comment that Ron is only ever seen as subservient to a guy like one or one or two times in the whole show, and it was kind of like, well, what's his flaw? What's his weakness? And they were, I think, they were trying to figure all that out. And now that he has one, he can now for the rest of almost the entire series just be super Ron. Like they could really play up just how masculine and manly he is because we know he has this massive weak spot for his ex-wife and and that's when he will crumble harder than any other thing because he he's able to stand up in the face of anything else uh because he's so tough except for this one thing and i think that that really i don't know that really helps solidify his character for the rest of the series right yeah yeah everybody every superman needs a kryptonite yeah and so now we know ron's kryptonite is is tammy and there are there are more kryptonites in his future Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but this is the first weakness for ron um and so ron and leslie decide to go and break up with tammy together leslie's gonna do this for her friend um and then it cuts to not not before donna uses the sticky note back on the window and says i told you so (laughs) yeah this is great so so donna so I'm going to write it down. <laughs> right. <laughs> it brings it back around. Like I wrote it down. Um, yeah. So good. Um, and so then uh, Mark and Donna are talking in the office and Andy comes and interrupts and uh, and Andy's trying to portray a hypothetical situation uh, where somebody needs to choose between somebody else uh, for a boyfriend, girlfriend situation. And she's like, Donna, who would you choose between Mark or me? And, uh, and Donna, Donna chooses Andy, but they go and Mark and Andy talk and say, Hey, can we be mature about this? And, uh, Andy, uh, and he says, yeah, I doubt it. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't know. <laughs> I already told you how much I love Ann. So no, I doubt it. I love that. He's, he's very honest about what he's doing and, and his feelings here. So, um, and so when they go to Tammy and, Leslie and Ron um, and Leslie is trying to say, like, listen, Ron needs to break up with you. And uh, Leslie and just or not. Ann, what's her face? Tammy just laughs at her like you can't break up with us. You get he he loves me. He's my man. And and then she tries to say, like, he's just Ron. Don't you see? Like, she's just trying to get you for herself and so manipulating all angles here. And um yeah, so Tammy is evil. She's absolute evil. Um, but what breaks Ron from the spell of Tammy is when um, uh, Leslie says, listen, I know you guys are terrible for each other, but I don't want my friend to be miserable. And so whether or not you give me the park, I don't care. Like, I don't want my friend Ron to, to keep going through this hell that you're putting him through. Um, and that's when Ron summons the courage to break up with Tammy. And he says, no woman has ever put my needs before her own. And so he decides, he decides to break up with her. Um, but then it cuts to Anne confronting Andy about the whole shrine and everything. And, um, says, listen, you can't keep doing this. You're terrible. Got to grow up. 
And uh, <laughs> there's a great joke in there because they're like, he has got all of those pictures up there. And she goes, take the bikini one down. And he goes, the teeny one. <laughs> it was a smaller mm-hmm. picture. Yeah. It's yeah. Funny. He's still, um, yeah. So she's, you know, regulating on Andy. Like you're, this, this behavior is inappropriate. So stop it. Um, but then uh, it cuts back to the library administrative building and uh, Les is outside and she's changing the reader board letters to yeah. from library uh, L I B to library L I E B. Um, so I thought that was a fun little quick joke. They don't draw a lot of attention to it other than like, they don't say she's doing this. It's just, it happens. Um, and that makes me laugh every time. And Ron comes out in a huff, like we need to get out of here really quick. And she's like, Ron, some of your mustache is missing and there's a thumbtack in your head. Like, yes, we got to keep moving. We broke up with Tammy. Um, so yeah, so Ron is free and the library, he did not give the lot over to the library. Um, and they're continuing to move ahead. So they cut to the end and Ron is talking about how terrible Tammy is and, uh, closes out by saying Tammy's birth was payback for the sins of man. But you know, the worst (laughs) thing about her, she works for the library. <laughs> so good. And they both raise a glass to that. Like, yep, yep. Yep. She works for the library. <laughs> That's it. Nailed it. <laughs> so, yeah. So this episode, I mean, we meet Tammy and Tammy will come back. We have Andy now ensconced in City Hall. Mm-hmm. So he's not going anywhere. And they're uh, really setting up the future uh, for this, uh, for this, the cast it's good. It was a good get all the pieces where they need to be. Yeah. Episode. Starting to starting to come together. We got a few more, few more shakeups coming. But other than that, it's uh, it's really starting to take form. Yeah. So coming off of Pekitis episode into this episode, you know, I feel like it's a bit of a letdown. I don't feel I, like Pekitis was just so good. And this one is it's just a breathing episode. You know, like we need to, we need to, there's some funny things happening throughout, but we really just need to get everybody where they need to be. Um, but it is definitely not going to be in my top 10 episodes. Yeah. yeah I so. think that's the hard part about like having those standout episodes that are single, you know, one-offs, like one shots, like the Pekitis episode, Halloween, there wasn't a lot of character development there. This one had a lot of character development with Ron. I like that. So I would, I would put it up there. Uh, I, I, I did enjoy this episode for that reason. Uh, but as far as like, yeah, to best of episodes, it's not, there's a, there's a Ron and Tammy one I actually like better that's coming up. So yeah. Is that the one with the cornrows? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. That was great. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty, pretty good. So that one sticks out like already just seeing, like you say cornrows, you like you talk to a fan of Parks and Rec and it's like, oh yeah, that one. So, so it does set up some really good stuff, but yeah. Yep. So that's, uh, that's this episode. It, it was good. Uh, it was enjoyable. Um, let me pull up my IMDB cause I can't remember what is next on the, this next episode. I'm trying to, camel. I'm watching it with kids, but I'm not. Oh yeah. This one, the camel is great. We meet Sue. Yeah, I like Joe. the camel. Uh, <laughs> yes. yeah, the camel is a good episode. Yeah. Sewage Joe. The guy who plays Sewage Joe. Um, I, mm-hmm. I'm I'm gonna look it up. It's Parks and Rec. Um, he's a comedian. He does stand up comedy. Yeah. And uh, he was on Last Comic Standing for only the auditions. And uh, his audition, because a lot of comedians, like when Last Comic Standing first came out, a lot of comedians thought it was a. Um, it was beneath stand-up comedy. Stand-up comedy should not be a competition, is what people would say um, in comedy circles. And uh, oh, where is he? Kirk Did Fox you- is his name. Um, yeah. But he, his audition for Last Comic Standing was he came up to the platform and he rolled across the platform and stood up, came to the microphone and said, that's how I roll and walked off. <laughs> A visual, visual pun. <laughs> it was fantastic. I was like, I want. I think he won, 
and we're still in the audition phase. Um, <laughs> That's so, it. Yeah, shut it yeah. down, boys. That's it. <laughs> it was so funny. There's no reason uh, to laughed, keep going. <laughs> I laughed so hard. I had a TiVo at that time, and I saved that episode for months just to go back to that moment. <laughs> That's how I roll. Um, yeah, he's great. We're learning a lot about your personal timeline here, too, because if you had a TiVo, that means it had to have been after the apartment. No, uh, no. I had a TiVo in the apartment. What? Yeah. Cause you had a TiVo, but no cable. Well, I had cable, but it was free cable. Um, and so I was able to run the TiVo into the, the cable into the TiVo. I did not have internet. But the cable signal updated your TiVo with the schedule. And so you could go through and just program your times, even if you couldn't search for all of the shows. Like if I just knew it was on at eight, I would just go to I would say it like a VCR. I would just program channel and time. So I'm, le- I'm learning so much today. Yeah. The TiVo was awesome. It was a gift from my mom. She got us a TiVo, but then we had to pay for the subscription to TiVo. So I was like, what? What is this? You gave me a bill for Christmas. So <laughs> those are the best. Those are many gifts from my mom. <laughs> like, well, I'll get you started. <laughs> You're gonna have to pay the rest of the way. Like, I didn't want this in the first place. <laughs> I think you should watch more TV. Thanks, mom. And pay for it. Yeah, it was pretty great. So cool. the only way we could do that was because we didn't we weren't paying for cable in the first place. <laughs> and and she knew that. So it's good. Yeah, it was a great deal. It was a really good deal, that apartment. Uh, so anyway. Well, all right. Well, I think we've talked about everything we can talk about for this episode. I, I believe you're correct. <laughs> so we should wrap this up and be back again to talk about season two, episode nine, The Camel. Sounds good. I will talk to you then. All right. I'll see you later. All right. Bye. Bye.